Okay, here we go. This is Franklin Park's uh, Lunch with the Arts. My name is Wynn McMichael. We'll wait a few minutes to make sure everyone has time to check in. And we're gonna do a little watercolor, little watercolor techniques. So let me know when you guys check in. All right. Take a preview of what we're working on today. And then I'm going to set up our camera here. Good morning, Elizabeth. I guess it's lunchtime now. Good afternoon. <laughs> All right. We're going to do some flowers. And first, let me show you what we have. You can use any type of paper, but it's best if you use some sort of watercolor paper, a thicker paper, because the lighter papers will soak through. Um, so I've got a couple brands here, and it's they're all different surfaces. Some of them are shinier, some of them are a little uh, more absorbent. But yes, try the watercolor paper. And if you don't have watercolor paper, don't worry, you can still use regular drawing paper. It'll just be a, a little different uh, texture. And then we also would like to, to use watercolors. So this is my travel palette. So when I do watercolors with, say, uh, the Loudon Sketch Club, I use this palette because it's easy to put away. It's very compact. Uh, it's called Jerry Q Art, and I can carry it everywhere. And it comes with a little brush that has a little uh, water thing right there. So, hi, Kelly. So the, the little tube of water, you fill it up, and when you squeeze it, water comes out the brush, and you don't have to carry a separate thing of water if you don't want. Just some fancy toys for watercolor artists. Um, but you can definitely just use a regular paintbrush. Softer, the better. A lot of times they'll say watercolor brush on them. And you can also use, like I love using the kids' paint palette too. So... It's just got bright, very vibrant, vibrant colors. Or you can use the tubes. The professional artists use uh, liquid tubes of watercolor. Now, I'm gonna show you a couple different things. We'll start with the, just a watercolor paper. If you don't have watercolor paper, don't worry about it. I also have drawing paper to demo on so you can see the difference and I also brought along some salt because I like to play with salt it makes a really neat effect and if you have cling wrap that's a fun one as well and if you have if you have either wax paper or parchment paper. Um, we're gonna try some effects with that, just textures. So, um, salt does this really neat effect where it sucks up all the color. And so it'll leave a little circle of uh, lighter color. And you can use the Morton's iodized regular table salt type thing. Um, which will give you a little bit of a smaller uh, effect. And then if you use the thicker, like more coarse salt, then it'll suck up a lot more water and you can get different textures that way. All right, so let's see who else is here. All right, we're gonna start with a little bit of water on our brush and water on our paints. 
So what I want you to do is get a little bit of water. I, I just get a old container, put a little water in it. So this is a yogurt container and dip your brush in and soak your paints so you can get it started. Otherwise, the pigment doesn't want to move. And you don't have to wet all of them. You can wet just the colors you're going to use. And, and if you decide that you're using these as well, you can clean them out first. Because a lot of times these get messy really fast, especially the lighter colors like yellow. So I'm just going to clean out this yellow. And let me see if I brought a paper towel over here. And then we'll just make sure it's a little more yellow than green. All right. So, Racine, can you get me some paper towel, please? Thanks. And then what we'll do is clean it out. And I'll show you. We're going to start with a darker color, a little bit of a brown for the tree trunk. And sometimes if you feel like it, you can mix a darker color in there if you don't like the, how light the brown is. And I just make a little sweep with my brush, like a tree trunk, almost like a parenthesis. And then the other side, the reverse. And if you want a straighter tree, you just make it a less curve. And then you can extend out the roots if you want. And we're just gonna run a little bit of color. And then I added a little darker, so you can add purple or brown or black, anything that will make it darker. And run some more color over. Now, notice how this water is sitting on top of this paper a little more. This paper is shiny, so it's not going to soak as well. So I'm gonna to have to add a lot of paint to get the color. And the more water you put in, the less bright your paints look. So since it's not soaking into the paper, it's gonna sit on the top for a little bit. And it might take a little while to dry. So you can add your tree limbs, however way you want it. There's no wrong way to do it. Just add in your tree limbs, whatever shape you like. And and some people like extra little branches coming off. And then rinse out your brush in the water. And once you've rinsed your brush off, you're gonna just get a little, whatever blossom color you like. So I'm gonna try this out. I kinda like that color. You can mix it in. You can have two different colors. You want a little bit of yellow in there. And then just rinse out your brush a little bit and we're gonna get mostly water and we're gonna do sweeping, kind of the, the flowering part, the tree foliage. And when you sweep over top of that, you're just gonna put mostly water. You're not gonna to add too much color. And when you've got water on it, then you're gonna take that red or whatever blossom color you like, pink, red, orange, yellow, whatever type of tree color um, blossom you want. I like this bright reddish color. I'm gonna actually put it a little pinker too. Get a big blob on your palette and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take a little piece of wax paper and we're gonna dip it in there. So 
I have a piece of wax paper. I'm just going to crumple it up a little. You can get a bigger piece if you want. Um, and we'll crumple it. Here's another piece. And when you crumple it, it makes these little textures that you're going to pick up the paint with. And when you do that, when you drop it in there, it's going to leave kind of a blossom effect. And your tree is starting to bloom. So. And then if you run out of paint, you're just going to add a little bit more paint color on. If you want different colors, you can. Add a little crinkle, crinkle. And we're gonna add a little of this here. And we're gonna get, see how the texture is? It's a little, and it's okay if it splatters a little cause that kind of gives it a nice loose effect, more atmospheric. Once you get your tree shape down and you've got enough paint in there that you, you like the color, then you're going to get your salt. So while it's wet, you're going to pick up a little bit of the salt, either the table salt or the coarse salt. And I put my salt in a little sprinkly thing so I can just shake it on there and you can see the effect how it sucks up the paint let me see if you can it sucks it up a little bit and then if you want to see the the coarse sea salt or the coarse salt I just take a pinch and drop it in the wettest parts and it starts absorbing the paint color. And you can do this for different effects like snow, stars, anything that you want a little extra texture in, you can just drop in. And there's a little bit. And you can also take your table shaker and shake it right on there if that's easiest. And you can see how it sucks up the paint. Now, sometimes you get a little brush hair or something in there. You can just pick it up lightly with your paintbrush. All right. And so I'm going to show you this again, except in on the drawing paper. So you can see what the different effect would be. So certain drawing paper will soak up things a little better. So we're gonna do a quick, just a small one over here. And we're gonna do the same thing. And if you have drawing paper, that'll work fine. Watercolor paper just holds the water a little bit better. So I'm gonna do a small tree here. Just the curve of the trunk and then do that and we'll add a little bit of water to the branches so see how it sits on top this drawing paper is a little shiny Just do a big, just do a big like that. And 
then you can also put it down at the bottom if you want a little bit of color down there. You can add the color to, down at the bottom where the blossoms might have fallen. And you're gonna mix those, those reds again. Blossom colors. Just get a lot of pigment on there, a lot of paint. See how I've saturated my brush? And then get your crumpled up wax paper. Sometimes you can try out different textures. Um, you know, drop it in there. And you're gonna drop these flower shapes. And you can drop it in the bottom as well where the petals have fallen. When the paper's a little bit drier, it looks more like individual petals. And again, you can add your salt. Thick salt or your table salt, either one works fine. Coarse sea salt works, uh, and you'll see how it kind of spreads the paint different. So, drawing paper will work if you don't have watercolor paper or cardstock would work. And then you just set these aside to let them dry. And I'll show you another flower. Now, hope everyone's been doing well during this time. Um, hope you guys have been enjoying a lot of arts and music. Franklin Arts Center has been posting every day at lunchtime a whole bunch of different programs, music, live, and art demos and such. So pay, uh, check in every day at lunchtime. Um, hi, Priscilla. Thanks for joining us. Um, I've been listening to a lot of books on tape, and one of them is Brené Brown. Uh, and Brené Brown says, uh, creativity is a function of being human. There are just people who use their creativity and those who don't. Um, and she said, unused creativity is not benign and it does not dissipate. So she said, creativity, unused creativity turns into rage, grief, shame, and judgment. So find something to be creative about. Find art, music, writing, dance, movement, anything that you can be creative about and see if you can use it because it's a myth that people don't have it. Everybody has creativity. All right, so let's do another, another picture. We did the cherry blossom tree. Now we're gonna try, we're gonna get a little bit of water on our paintbrush and rinse out any of the old red coloring that you've got. And I'm gonna scoop up a little yellow. Um, and then we're gonna work on uh, tulips. So tulips for the most part are kind of rounded shapes, right? So I'm just gonna take a round curve like that. And then we're gonna do the middle petal, almost like a an oval, a long oval, and then on the other side, the other petal. And it's okay this time if you've got a little of that extra paint on your brush because having a couple different colors is kind of fun to play with. So if you put a little yellow and then touch it with orange, you, let, you get a little of a mixture and you can go back through and add one more color if you want. So we're gonna do tulip shapes. 
basically three petals. So you can start with the middle, but I usually start with the left petal. Let me see if I can do the middle petal. It's just about exploring it. If you've never done it before, try it out. Have fun with it. Now I did a slightly different color on that one. So you can do... And just shape it the way you like it. So if it's too long, too skinny, shape it. You can also, if you decide to go back through with another color, you can add that color back in. And then you can just add as many tulips as you want. If you want to add a whole field of them, you can. But just to get that practice in, that shape. Just like anything, the more you do it, the better you get at it. Some a little different color in there now. Hi, Carolyn. Hi, Chip. Thanks for joining us. So you can add red to it if you want. And if you want. A neat trick is if you rinse out your brush and you just get it loaded up with water and say you didn't like that red color not too much anyways you want to take some of it out you get a paper towel watercolor is forgiving in a lot of ways you take a paper towel I usually tear it down small enough and I just blot out that color and I say I don't like that I'm gonna erase it yeah you could practically erase the watercolor and then put back in the color that you want. And the more paint you use versus water, the brighter it'll be. These will dry a little uh, duller than they after they dry, so. But you can decide how many tulips you want and do your own garden of tulips it's nice if you have tulips out front, then you can actually look at the colors and see if you can match them up. And just add in as you like. You can add just the tips are a different color. And afterwards, you can get in your green stems. Rinse out your brush really well. And I start with yellow because there's a little bit of uh, yellow in the greens. So if you do a yellow there, then add the green. Then you have a light and a dark. And if you don't like it, once again, just add a little water, wipe it up. Now, some papers wipe out a little easier than others. If you're using a watercolor paper that is a little thicker, heavier paper, tends to be a little more forgiving. And you can go back through when it's dry and add it back in your color. And if you want, your tulip leaves tend to be these long shapes. And again, if you want to do two colors, you can add like a lighter color on one side, give it a little highlight.
but play with it. See how you like it. See the shapes that you want to make with it. Everyone's tulips are going to be their own style. Some more color in. Back here, I'm going to go around and just skip it a little bit and get a little stem out this way. Or you can just practice. It doesn't have to be perfect. Now, some people like to do like the rounder, like do a circle first and then do your shaping. That works too. If you find that easier, you can do that. So it has a Now I tried something experimental a little while ago. I just did a little tulip and then I decided to try the plastic wrap, saran wrap on it. If it's dry, I'll show you what that's like. So if you've got saran wrap and you wanna do a texture, I've got that press and seal. Take a little piece of saran wrap, however much you want to cover. So I'm just going to try one tulip and see how that works. And you just tear off a little saran wrap. And you just, it could, you could, if you don't have saran wrap, it's fine if you use a plastic bag. Um, light plastic works. And you, if you want to lay it right on your flower. And what it does is it'll leave little lines where the saran wrap touches. And I did that with this one a little while ago. I'm not sure if it's dry yet, but when you lift it, it leaves a little bit of texture in there where the saran wrap lines are, where they dry. So if you want it more textured, crinkle it up more. And then this one I've done earlier with the salt. Once it's completely dry, you can see the salt crystals in there. You can brush it off outside or in the trash can, but you can see the the tree has those textures like the blossoms. So, and that's our, that's the first one. And once again, it's still a little damp. Remember when you salt, you can salt the tulips too if you wanted to see what it looks like. So this one has, it has to be damp if you're gonna salt. So make sure you have some liquid in there, salt it, and see what it looks like, how it comes out. Just playing with it. It's fun to play with it and decide how you want to do it later on. So once it dries, it'll leave a little bit of texturing just like the, the tree where it has this bloom effect. And that can be nice in a lot of different pictures. So, I think that's about it. If you've got any questions, I'm happy to answer them. Um, wonderful, Priscilla. Yeah, when the tulips, they're getting ready to bloom. Right now, I think the, at least in my yard, the hydrangeas are blooming. So, or not hydrangeas, uh, hyacinths are blooming. So, if you've got, I think, if you've got hyacinths, You've got these almost like they're little dots. And you can do them like this, where you just do just the tip of your round brush, like the very tip. Grab some purple or pink or whatever color your, your flowers are. 
and wet that paint there. Purple blue is what I've got. So it's got a little bit of this touch of blue, touch of purple in there. And then do these little dots almost. Now there's different types. I think there's grape hyacinth where it's more rounder like this. And then there's the, the ones with the flowers that are more like, um, let's see, there are four petals or five petals, I can't remember. But they come together on a stalk. And if you wanna do that, that's just like a star shape that I've got going here. Um, you can do your hyacinths that way. And if you wanted, I think with that, you would just do, I think they're, they've got those big leaves as well. So I'll have to look out front. Just grab a little green, do your leaves out here. And do your spots there. If you want them a little more abstract, let's try this, I'll do the green first and we'll get the purple I'm gonna do it a little longer instead of with the tip of the brush so see how the I extended the circle shape a little so it's more oblong And you get kind of that, that general idea that it's a hyacinth blooming. And actually, they bloom in groups. So it's going to be several. It's not usually a single one unless you just got it started. They like to clump. And once you've got your your shapes in there, looks like your spring garden. All right. So give you a few different ideas, but you can check out different ways to make the petals too, you know. If you want it lighter at the edges or if you want the dark to be in the center, the way you place your brush, the first touch of the brush is going to have the heaviest color. Purple's a little harder to see, but if you did it with an orange or a red, I think you can see it a little easier. So you can get different flower effects, different petal shapes. It's almost like a marigold. And just add in your petals afterwards, your leaves. So you can do all different types of flowers, different types of petals. All right. Well, Try out, try them out, see what you think. 
once it's dry, you can pull off the saran wrap and see how it turns out. And same thing with the salt. You can set it out. If it's sunny, you can set it out. But if you look real, you can see already the salt's making those different textures in there, almost leaf-like. If you did a fall tree, you could do all the fall colors with the those shapes in there from the salt. And it turns out really nice. And of course, you can always salt more if you feel like it. There's a big puddle there. If I wanted to, I could salt it and it'll suck up all the paint and the water. So, anybody have any questions? Hang in there. Do art when you can. Listen to music. Be creative. And, yeah, so here's the salt in action. And... I think that's all I have for today. I hope you guys have a great weekend and good luck with all the students going back to um, some of the schoolwork again on Monday. And thank you Franklin Park for hosting. Hope you guys learned a little something to play with and keep your playfulness around. So if you have any questions, feel free to check in. We also have, um, We'll repost also on Da Vinci Art Studios page with uh, Arts for All. And hope you guys have a good weekend. Yes, we would love, love to see your techniques if you try it. So definitely post them on the page, Franklin Park page, and um, check out some of our local other arts groups as well in the community. I know there's... Um, there was a person in Western Loudoun who is a teacher, an art teacher, who is putting together um, a list for people to do like a scavenger hunt of all the arts, uh, sculptures and public art things that they can do from the car. So people can drive around and take a look at that. Um, she's putting that together. Hopefully it'll be shared um, and it'll be fun to do for the family. Thank you. Have a good day.